visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University. Welcome to Nilfisk University, where excellence is attained through active learning. Advanced SW900 Use and Care Training. This module provides use and care training for the Advanced SW900 battery-operated walk-behind sweeper platform. This course is not intended to replace the operator's manual that ships with the machine. Please read, understand, and follow all safety and operating instructions in the operator's manual. Doing so will ensure years of safe operation and optimum performance from your machine. After successfully completing this module, you will be able to explain all user interface buttons and levers, explain how to prepare the machine for use, explain the steps necessary to start the sweeping system, describe how to efficiently and safely sweep, understand how to empty the hopper, understand how to operate the dust filter shaker system, explain how to use the wet sweep bypass system and when to use it, explain how to remove and replace the main and side brooms and dust filter, Describe how to properly store the machine at the end of the shift. Describe how to adjust the main broom height and identify steps for routine maintenance. This training will begin by presenting all steps necessary in preparing, using, cleaning, and storing the SW900 during a regular shift. During this portion, we will look at all operator interface points. This will be followed by a maintenance section to address how to keep the machine functioning properly for many years. Before beginning a shift of sweeping with the SW900, the machine must be properly prepared for use. If the SW900 was properly stored, as will be covered later in this training, you should find the machine at the beginning of the shift in the following manner. Machine parks safely out of the way with the battery charger cord plugged into the wall. Machine should be reasonably clean with an empty hopper. To prepare the SW900 for use, disconnect the charger cord from the outlet and tuck the cord into the storage location on the back of the machine. Adjust the handle height to comfortable height for the operator using the lock on the right side base of the handle. Verify the hopper is empty, empty if necessary. With the hopper removed, inspect the main and side brooms. Cut out any debris wrapped in or around the brooms. If brooms are significantly worn or damaged, replace them now. Inspect the dust control filter to make sure it is in good condition without mud or debris on its surface. Clean or replace if necessary. Never use the unit without a dust filter in place. Reinstall the hopper. You are now ready to begin sweeping. Activation of sweeping system. The SW900 is designed to be simple and intuitive to use. Turning the key to the run position will activate the main broom and dust control vacuum motor. Note, for safety, the unit charger cord must be unplugged and the hopper must be properly in place for the unit to turn on. If brooms do not start as expected, verify hopper is properly installed and that the charger cord is not plugged in. See maintenance section for adjusting main broom height. Also present on the operator dashboard are the hour meter and the battery level indicator. When you turn the machine on, if the battery indicator is yellow or red, charge the unit before using. On the right side of the machine, verify that the wet sweep bypass vent is closed to assure dust control system is active. The side brooms can then be activated by moving the side broom control levers back until the side brooms are on and set at the correct level. Pulling the levers back turns the side brooms on and lowers them. Pushing them forward raises them from the ground and turns them off. The optimal height for sweeping is with the bristles lightly brushing the surface, not mashed into the surface. Too high, too low, just right. Side brooms should be raised when not in use to prevent damage to the side brooms. Propulsion or Traction Drive System the SW900 can be pushed along by the operator, or it can help propel itself along, which can come in handy when sweeping up ramps or across carpet. Pulling back on the drive control lever will engage the propulsion system. The machine uses a slip clutch type system. 
so gradually squeeze the lever to engage the amount of propulsion assist you desire. If you grab the lever firmly and quickly, the machine will take off quickly in response. When going around a corner, it is easier to maneuver and turn the SW900 sweeper when the propulsion system is not engaged, since the propulsion system works on both wheels and will try to power the machine straight forward. Dust Control The SW900 is designed with a vacuum-based dust control system. Anytime the key switch is turned on and the motor is running, the vacuum fan will be running, pulling dusty air from the hopper through the panel filter. Sweeping through wet areas will allow water to be swept into the hopper and potentially reach the panel filter. A wet panel filter loses the ability to filter air so the dust control system is greatly degraded if a filter gets wet. The SW900 is built with a wet sweep bypass system to address this situation. Activate the wet sweep bypass if sweeping in wet areas to avoid mudding the filter caused by bringing water in contact with the dust control filter. Open the vent on the right side to activate the wet sweep bypass in wet areas and close it again when sweeping in dry areas. A dust filter that has gotten wet must be removed and washed out with water and allowed to fully dry before it will perform properly again. After sweeping in dusty applications, the dust filter will become full of dust. The SW900 has a manually operated filter shaker that aggressively shakes each pleat of the dust panel filter. Operate the filter shaker by pulling out and pushing in on the sturdy handle located on the right face of the machine. Use the filter shaker every 10 minutes or so in dusty applications to help maintain good vacuum airflow and good dust control. If you experience poor dust control performance while sweeping, verify that the wet sweep bypass vent is closed and that the panel filter is in good shape allowing vacuum air to pass through it. More about filter maintenance will be covered in the maintenance area of this training. To help maximize productivity and achieve great sweeping results, here are some tips. Plan out and use an organized and logical cleaning route to optimize your sweeping coverage. Keep a consistent overlap while sweeping. Use the dual side brooms to maximize sweeping productivity. Open the wet sweep bypass vent if sweeping wet and close it when dry. Again, for good dust control and to protect the dust filter. Minimize backing up since that can leave debris behind. Look behind regularly to confirm the floor is being properly swept and that you are not trailing debris, which is a typical indication that the hopper is full. Do not stop for long periods of time with the brooms running, as this can leave a polish mark on the hard surface or a potential wear pattern on a carpet. To capture larger debris, like a soda can, Push down on the handle to raise the front and lower the machine when the debris is directly under the broom. When should you empty the hopper or dump as it is often called? It is good practice to empty the hopper after each shift of sweeping to prevent odors and to have the machine ready for the next shift. You will also need to dump when the hopper is full and you start trailing debris behind the machine, which is an indication that the hopper is full. Steps to empty the hopper. Turn off the machine using the key. Grab the handle on the top of the hopper and pivot it out from the recessed position. Pull the handle forward and the hopper will be removed from the machine. Use handle and built-in wheels to roll the hopper to the location where it will be dumped. Lift and empty the debris from the hopper into a garbage can or dump on the ground by tipping the hopper over. While the hopper is out, inspect the main broom and side brooms and remove any trapped debris to assure proper sweeping performance. Replace the hopper into its normal sweeping position on the machine. You are now ready to resume sweeping. Eventually, the area to be swept will be completed so you can prepare the machine for work the next day, or the battery will become depleted and go from green to yellow on the battery gauge indicator on the control panel and will need to be charged. As the battery gets low, with the indicator going to yellow, travel back to the charging location. Storing the machine at the end of the shift. Empty the hopper as covered previously and if wet debris was swept, wash out the hopper to prevent dry buildup and unpleasant odors. Transport machine back to the storage and charging location and turn off the machine using the key. Raise the side rooms off the floor by pushing both activation levers forward. 
Inspect brooms and remove any wrap debris or replace them if they are worn. Connect the charger cord into a standard 110 volt outlet. This will automatically charge the batteries for the next cleaning shift. It's also a good idea to take a wet rag and clean off the exterior of the machine to keep it good looking and clean. After charging, the machine should be ready for the next shift of cleaning. This next section of the training will look at how to maintain the SW900 to keep it performing properly for years of service. Scheduled Maintenance Table This image is from the operator's manual that was provided with the machine. Take a moment to read through the tasks and the frequency of these tasks. A few of the most common maintenance tasks will now be covered. For more detail on these tasks or for detail about maintenance not covered in this training, contact your advanced service dealer or consult the service manual. In addition to the specific maintenance tasks, it is a great idea to complete a machine walk around each day specifically looking for anything that is not correct on the machine. Addressing found issues quickly will improve machine performance and increase the life of the machine. Main Broom Height Adjustment For the optimal combination of excellent sweeping performance and long broom life, the brooms should be set so the bristles are flicking the ground. Setting the broom too low will only result in additional battery draw and reduced broom life. Main Broom Height Adjustment Find a clean flat spot on the floor and drive the SW900 machine to it. Without moving the sweeper, turn on the sweeping system by turning on the key. Let the machine run there for a minute or so without moving it. The goal here is to allow the machine to leave a polish pattern on the floor. The polish pattern should be in the area of 0.8 inches to 1.6 inches. If polish pattern is too narrow, turn the adjustment knob to lower the broom. If the polish pattern is too wide, turn the adjustment knob to raise it. Note that for unlevel surfaces, the broom will need to be set slightly lower to assure the lowest points of the surface are swept. Battery Water Level Check Batteries that get low on water will have their runtime and usable life significantly degraded. To check battery water level, remove the hopper and release the top hood latch to access batteries. Carefully remove battery caps one by one and look at the water level. Water level should be above the plates but below the top to allow for water expansion while charging. If water level is low, add distilled water to the cells. Repeat process for each cell or cap of the battery. Caution: Inside the battery is a powerful acid and water mix. Avoid contact with it. Wear safety glasses and gloves and wash hands after checking. Dust Filter Inspection A poorly maintained dust filter will greatly increase the amount of fugitive dust a sweeper releases to the surrounding air, so a properly maintained filter is a must to assure good dust control. Dust Filter Inspection Remove hopper Inspect the dust filter. Verify that it is clean and not damaged and that the filter seals are in good condition. Replace the filter if necessary. To remove the filter, release the two latches and remove the filter. Don't use the sweeper without the filter in place. Reinstall the filter first. Main Broom Replacement Steps With the hopper removed, open the broom access door on the left side of the machine. Loosen the two plastic locking knobs. Twist and remove the main broom idler and set it aside. Pull the main broom out through the front of the machine. Reassemble in the reverse order. Note, the main broom is not reversible, so must be installed with the hexagon-shaped opening in the main broom core towards the inside of the machine. Side broom replacement. Carefully tip machine back. Loosen and remove the plastic locking screw in the center bottom of the side broom. Remove and replace the side broom. Repeat for the other side. Note, only tip the machine back for the side broom replacement process and then return the machine to the normal sweeping position. This training module should have prepared you to explain all user interface buttons and levers, explain how to prepare the machine for use, explain the steps necessary to start the sweeping system, describe how to efficiently and safely sweep, understand how to empty the hopper, 
understand how to operate the dust filter shaker system, explain how to use the wet sweep bypass system and when to use it, explain how to remove and replace the main and side brooms and dust filter, describe how to properly store the machine at the end of the shift, describe how to adjust the main broom height, and identify steps for routine maintenance. The instructional portion of this training module is now complete. Visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University.